Hey guys, and wow, would you look at that? Another top 10 regarding Scarlet and Violet. We do it all here. And today, we're looking at the top 10 Pokemon I want to see return in the DLC for these games. We don't know for sure just now if we'll have DLC, but Pokemon Day is probably either about to happen or has happened when you're watching this. So the answer will be pretty clear. I just hope that none of the Pokemon in this video were featured in some sort of trailer before this video goes live, but I'm willing to take the risk. So these are 10 entries for Pokemon that I'd like to see return in the DLC for my own personal reasons, whether they be the ones I really love or ones I think just need to come back already. Let's get into it and see what I'm working with. Hey y'all, if you want to support me further, I have other channels as well. Mystic Umbreon Shorts, where we do other exclusive Pokemon content there. Mystic Reads, where I read stories and anime fanfics, including Pokemon. And Arion, my new streaming channel where I play a variety of games. You can find links for all three of these channels in the description below and the iCard above. So we're going to kick it off with Minior, a Pokemon that while I'm not some big fan of, I love to see return. It's a super interesting Pokemon with a cool mechanic. The rock flying typing is a nice one in a lot of ways. So having an extra one of those in the ninth generation would be pretty cool. But also, like I said, the concept of Minior is pretty cool. It's a Meteor with a crazy weird alien-like core inside with an ability that changes up its stats when it goes below half HP. There's several different colors for this thing, a cool looking shiny, and a move pool that's pretty solid on its own, even without the thought of potential new moves from the 8th and 9th generations being added in. Oh, and of course, it's only ever been available in Alola, so it'd be pretty nice for it to finally come back and get a chance, because not many Pokemon have been completely left out up to this point. I just hope we get to see this interesting hunk of floating rock return. The next Pokemon up is another rock type. This time, it's Rhyperior. I like Rhyperior a lot. It's a great Pokemon and a good evolutionary line and whatnot. And if you recall, I was a big fan of it in Legends Arceus, and I was pretty disappointed to not see it in Paldea at all. Rhyperior is a really good Pokemon and naturally a fun connection to the first gen, so I find it very strange that they decided not to actually include it. I mean, I would have definitely liked to have seen people arguing over using Rhyperior or even Eviolite Rhydon over Garganical or something. There's definitely someone who would have tried to start that argument. It's also just nice to have extra physical walls in the game and to use during a playthrough. And Rhyperior definitely is one of those with a really good attack stat. Beedrill is the next Pokemon I want to go with on this list, as it's been getting the short end of the stick in these new generations as well. While there's no Butterfree in this generation either, at the very least, it was prominently featured in the 8th generation with the Gigantamax form and what have you. I want to see it come back so we can get some more bug poison representation. Having only Venomoth and Scarlet and Violet is a bit weird, considering how often we associate the bug and poison types together. Plus, I just feel like this killer wasp has gotten the short end of the stick for too long, despite how much I love Butterfree. It's time to free Beedrill and give it the love that has earned over the years. Coming in at number 7, we have our only mythical Pokemon on the list, being the Melmetal line. These two Pokemon's existences have always been so strange, being that they can only be obtained and evolved in Pokemon Go. While definitely a cool concept, I really would like them to make the jump into the main series games in more of an official way. Legends Arceus has shown us that Game Freak are more than willing to put Mythical directly into the games now, and even have little side quests along with them. So why not do it for the mythical without a region to call its own? I'd also be curious on how they would actually evolve Melton into Melmetal if they went that route. In Go, you need a whopping 400 Melton candy to get the job done, while in the anime, a bunch of them just meld together. Perhaps it would be a Zygarde cube type of situation, or perhaps even having a full party of Melton would then narrow them down to one Melmetal. But I think that the most likely scenario is that they just let us transfer them in, which is fine, I suppose. Beggars can't be choosers after all. Mm -hmm. 
Wrapping up our first half of the list is just a Pokemon I like with no deeper reason behind it. And that Pokemon is Politoed. Of course, having Politoed in means the rest of the Poliwag line needs to be in too, which is great for those Pokemon like Poliwrath a lot. But yeah, I'm more of a Politoed kind of guy. A lot of this love, as a lot of you may know, comes from Misty's Politoed in the anime. It's just such a cute and lovable Pokemon, and I really just want to be able to see it roaming around. Maybe even laying down by a beautiful riverside, taking in the peace and serenity of its surroundings. Now doesn't that sound nice? Starting off our top half of the list is the Porygon line. Now, I can honestly see them deciding to give this line a break and giving some other line the shine, as the Porygons have never had to miss out on a game so far, even appearing in Legends Arceus of all games. But why stop the trend here? I mean, they're just such a cool Pokemon, and it would be a shame not to see them floating around in some mysterious area. Honestly, it feels like a Pokemon that would have made sense to be roaming around in Area Zero, with all the labs and technology down there. But perhaps if we continue having to deal with the ramifications of Arvin's parents' research, then just maybe we will have the opportunity to see them in another location in Paldea. Now, number four are going to be the most obvious ones, as they are probably a lot of people's number one pick. It's the starters. I mean, how could I not put them here? So far, we've already had Charizard, Cinderace, and Greninja added in through 7-star raids. But I don't believe that that'll be the last we see. We already know for a fact that Typhlosion, Decidueye, and Samurott lines will be added in because of their appearance in Legends Arceus. But why not just keep going? Give me that Meganium unrivaled 7-star raid battle, though I imagine it being pretty easy compared to the previous three. That just seems to be the direction they're going with the starters. And I definitely will say, it's a fun, yet sometimes tedious way to get them. Taking the bronze medal today is our favorite Steel-type pseudo-legendary, Metagross. Now, I'm sure most of you get the gist of how I feel about Metagross at this point, so I'll try and keep it brief. Alongside Komo'o, it was one of the two pseudos that were weirdly left out, as every other one can be found just chilling in earlier parts of the game no less. The only reason for the omission of those two certainly has to be because of DLC plans, right? I mean, it would be really strange if that weren't the case, but I guess time will just have to tell with this one. But tell me, can any of you honestly sit there and say, yeah, I'm cool waiting for the next game to see this awesome metallic creature again? Yeah, I didn't think so. And with the silver medal of the day is a Mystic Umbreon fan favorite, being none other than the Nidoking line. Is that any surprise to some of you? I mean, how else am I going to meet my yearly quota of putting this thing on some sort of best team if it's not available in the games? But how about giving you all a unique reason for its appearance on the list today? More so than anything, I just want to see if they'll update its 3D model. We've already seen Game Freak do this of Charizard, having a much sharper anime-like appearance compared to its previous appearances. The shift to 3D wasn't kind for all Pokemon, and for Nidoking, while still pretty good, felt much more intense back when we were looking at sprites. So if they just adjust that underbite ever so slightly and make its head a little less round, I think we'll have our boy Nidoking looking as fierce as ever. And finally, in our number one spot today, is a Pokemon that might surprise some of you. I'm giving the gold medal to yet another Generation 1 Pokemon, being the Starmie line. I know some of you might be thinking of how many other Pokemon deserve to come back more than Staryu and Starmie. And look, I get it. The Starmie line has been getting a fair shake compared to Pokemon like Skitty and Zebstrika. But this is my list, and I choose this line over those other picks. Why? Well, because I like them a lot. Look. The line is cool, the shinies are dope, and I imagine seeing the nice new textures on them will make them feel even more like the flushy starfish that they are. Those might be really weird reasons, but they're my reasons. But here, I'll give you one more. 
Maybe it opens us up to the possibility of seeing some sort of paradox version of Starmie in one game. A future form would probably be straightforward, but I'd really like this sea game freak take a crack at an ancient version of this dope sea star. Well, there you have it folks, the top 10 Pokemon I want to see make their return in Scarlet and Violet. Now look, I know there are tons of Pokemon that should for sure come back, but this was just my personal list, so I encourage you to tell me your list in the comment section below. I love to hear your reasonings for why some other Pokemon should be included in the future, and with good hope, we won't have to wait too long to find out if they will make it back in or not. We're finally here in 2023, and I'm super excited for what this year has to offer us. There's potential DLC for Scarlet and Violet on the horizon, and who knows just what else Game Freak may have up their sleeves. It's going to be really exciting times coming up for a Pokemon fan. If you're interested in more Mystic content, check out my TikTok and Mystic Umbreon Shorts YouTube channel. I've got a really fun series starting up there very soon, and of course, have a weekly edition of my Should You Use series focusing on Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. Also, if you're into fan fictions and what ifs, check out Mystic Reads. I offer a ton of creative spoken word content on there, so come join me. Thanks again for joining me today, and I'll see you all next time.